with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. is from Isaiah chapter 53. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence. And there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we dedicate these quilts, I just want you to put your hand on a quilt to, uh, as we say these words over them. And remember, uh, a few weeks ago, we sent 71 boxes, I believe, of 
both quilts and um, health care kits and baby care kits and education kits, school kits, to Lutheran World Relief. So we'll, we'll hear some mention of that in this prayer also. These quilts are all going to be used locally. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we place our hands on these quilts, we join giver and receiver, recognizing the unity of all your people in the body of Christ. We celebrate being the children of God. We give thanks for the variety of gifts that compose these quilts, donations of fabric, thread and sewing machines, the faithful people who cut the squares, design the patterns, sew the tops, iron the fabric, make backs and fillers, tie and stitch the bindings, provide publicity, donate boxes, pack the quilts, bring food to sustain the quilters, and contribute the money for making these quilts. We celebrate generosity. We give thanks for the fellowship of all who work together to make the quilts the laughter, the shared stories, the joy of crafting something with one's hands and heart for another, and the time to reflect and wonder about the recipient. We celebrate community. Some quilts have already left to serve people around the world through Lutheran World Relief. The quilts in the pews today will be distributed locally. All the quilts we send as a sign of God's love and blessing for each person who receives one, trusting that their quilt will be a source of comfort and hope in the midst of disaster and fear, a symbol of Christ's love to those who suffer, a reminder that each recipient is a beloved child of God. We pray that the quilts will serve a useful purpose in the life of the recipient, that they will bring warmth in the cold, shelter from the sun and heat, a wall for a home, or a carrier for a few precious belongings. May it be a step in recovering one's life and a message of care from someone they may never meet. We celebrate hope in the midst of life's trials. We remember those who have received our quilts in the past and pray that their lives have returned to stability. We celebrate the gift of life. We ask that you bless the fruits of our labor and the whole mission of Messiah Lutheran Church, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who receive, as we are sown together in the unity of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Second reading is from Hebrews chapter 5. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he, and as he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. 
James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want to do? What, what is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry, angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and, with their, great one, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come up. Good morning. Aren't quilts fun? <laughs> well, thank you. That's a good answer. Yes, is a good answer. I think they're fun. These quilts are special in that quilters have been working all year long to make all these quilts. And they didn't make them for themselves. They made them to give away to other people. Now, isn't that something? It's called service. And Jesus said, that's exactly what we are created to do. That's exactly what we're saved to do, to serve. So these Quilts are a good, a good example of service. In fact, I should wear it around my neck. Don't you think? <laughs> and it could be my new stole because it, the stole is supposed to represent service. And this could represent service that we serve. Do you know what happens when we serve? We feel better. Believe it or not, we feel better. So when you think of your life as a Christian, it's not about what you can get, but it's about how God can live in you and help you to serve. All right? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus, that he gave his life for us. Help us to serve. Help us to find your life in us. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
I, uh, we, we had Maynard Hansen's funeral yesterday, and Maynard, 95 years old, his wonderful children are sitting out here. So it probably would be good, and some, obviously some of you have heard it. I, a story I told yesterday might be a good way for us to look at this text. And it's a story about the king and queen of Sweden. They came to the 1980 Olympics, and they were interested in seeing how teams from Sweden would perform, so they went to all the hockey games. Their plan was to go to all the hockey games that the Swedish team was playing in. And they came to the venue for the Swedish team's game one day, and there was a person there taking tickets, and the king of Sweden pulls out his tickets and hands them to the young man, and the young man said, I'm sorry, these tickets are not for today's game. And the king of Sweden says, oh, well, the right tickets are in my car. Could you make a little exception today for the king and queen of Sweden? And the ticket taker just stared at him. And then he looked at his wife and he said, he's the king, I suppose you're the queen. Well, on the way back to the car to get the tickets, the king and queen came to the car and it was being towed away. Maynard was a Scandinavian, and that's a Scandinavian trait to be rather unassuming, even when you're an important person. Nobody knows who you are. Well, Scandinavians sometimes would have then a hard time understanding how James and John would come and be so bold, so brass, so crass as to actually ask Jesus if they can sit on his right hand and his left hand when he comes into his kingdom, when he comes into his glory. How, how, who do they, just who do they think they are to ask for something like that? And Jesus sets them straight, doesn't give them what they want. He instead tells them what it takes to be great in the kingdom. To be great means to be the greatest servant. It... Um, So we're talking about service today. Jesus came, Jesus said in, in speaking to James and John, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his, rans his life as a ransom for many. He came to serve. So he serves us, gives us life and salvation, even though we don't deserve it. And then he tells them, you want to be great, serve. So there's got to be something there that Jesus is trying to reinforce in our lives. There's got to be something there where he's telling us, if you serve, it's very good for you. It's very good for you. It's the thing that you should uh, put as a priority in your life. You see, they talk about uh, happiness and joy. In our Constitution, Jefferson said one of our inalienable rights is to pursue happiness. It's too bad he didn't put in there pursue joy. Because even in the English language, there's a difference between happiness and joy. They're both the same emotion. But joy is deeper, it's more fluid. It's more life-transforming than mere happiness. At times, happiness can be a little empty. But joy just shakes us at times. 
at the ground of our being. Joy. Both James and the Apostle Paul tell us that, that we can even find joy. Christians are divine joy in their suffering. So when we suffer and serve, we go, oh boy, I can't do it. But we receive joy. Not mere happiness, but joy. Let me give you an example. Bob Pierce, some of you may know who he is. In 1950, he started the charity um, World Vision International. And in 1970, he started Samaritan's Purse. Well, he contracted cancer and was dying of cancer, and he went on a mission trip. He went to see uh, one of his missionaries. Uh, his missionary's name was Borneo Bob. So, so he went to see Borneo Bob. And when he got there, he came to the clinic that Borneo Bob worked at. And he noticed that there was a young girl on a cot down by the river. And you know how these executives are, especially someone in charge of big organization. He got upset. And he said, what is that young girl doing down by the river? Why isn't she here in the clinic being taken care of? And Borneo Bob said, oh, she does not have long to live. And she asked us to take her down to the river where it will be cooler. So Bob Pierce and Borneo Bob went down there and Borneo Bob held the young girl's hand and prayed with her and then asked her how she was doing and she says, oh, the pain. The pain is just so great. And I cannot sleep. If only I could sleep, it would be better. And Bob Pierce at this time has tears streaming down his cheeks because he knows because of his disease what it meant not to be able to sleep but Bob Pierce had one thing that this young girl didn't have he had a bottle of sleeping pills and with great tears and emotion he gave those pills to Borneo Bob and he said, make sure she takes these. She'll have her sleep. Bob Pierce was grieving not only his own illness, but knowing he would not be able to sleep. But he said, his heart was filled with joy. Joy. Jesus says that he came to serve. And he tells us, you want to be great, serve. And we find out that God created us to serve. I'm always amazed that people, secular people, find out these truths, and I just go, I wish they'd come to church. It would save them a lot of time. Uh, Louis C.K. mentioned him a few weeks ago in a sermon. He was interviewed on, uh, Louis C.K. wrote and directed and is part of the TV series on FX called Louis. I have never seen it, but uh, he's a comedian, and he had been taking drugs when he was really young and, and all, and part of the way he w said that he worked himself out of that was learning, especially when he got married and when he had children, to learn how to serve, and, and Terry Gross kept saying, 
well, tell me more about that. And then he said, and he said the greatest thing in his life was his children because now he was giving himself to serving his children. It's too bad his life couldn't evolve even beyond that. But he talked about uh, seeing a movie that impressed him greatly, an old movie that had Spencer Tracy in the movie. And he said it was a rather dark film for its day. And Spencer Tracy came, it was in the 1920s, and he met a young socialite who was going to commit suicide. And he just stumbled upon her. And she was going to commit suicide because her fiancé had left her for another woman. And as a young socialite, Spencer Tracy said, do you have a job? And she's a young socialite, so she didn't need one. She had wealthy parents. And she goes, uh, no, I don't have a job. Why do you ask? And Spencer Tracy said, I think you should get a job because it's very hard to be sad and useful at the same time. And ever since, and, and then, then Louis C.K. says, and ever since I saw that, I kept that in my head. Now just think, how about ever since I read that Jesus said that he came, the Son of God came, not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. As soon as he could do that and realize life, life truly lived is a life filled with service. It's an odd thing. And our service to others, and our giving to others, we really do find that God meets us. There's a wonderful old story that, that I'm sure some of you have heard. It's about how they found, uh, how Jewish rabbis found a place to build a new synagogue. They wanted a place where they felt the ground was holy ground. And here's how they found it, this, the way the story goes. Two brothers owned a mill, and every day, at the end of the day, they divided their work, their, their flour, evenly. Half, each took half and went home. And then they stored it away. And the one brother says, oh, this is not fair that I get half. My brother is married and he has some wonderful children and he needs more to, to take care of him. So every night he would go and put grain back into his brother's granary, flour back. And the other brother said, well, it's not fair that I get half because my brother, he's single, he's not married. And if he gets half, he needs more because he needs to take care of himself as he grows old. So he went and put uh, flour in his brother's storage. And every day they would look at it and they were mystified that the grain never went down. What's going on here? So one night they meet each other, stumble upon each other, holding their sack of flour. And they immediately realized what was happening. They dropped it, embraced, loved each other. Indescribable joy happened between the two. When the rabbis heard, they said, that's a godly spot. God is there. 
because of service, love, and joy. God was there. So what Jesus is trying to teach us, a way to find God, yes. A way to live, yes. A way to have our lives transformed and truly find joy, yes. Why? Because the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his, ran his life as a ransom for many. Amen. We're going to receive two mem new members. I think we only have two here today. Scott and Linda, come forward, if you would. And we have a number of new members in waiting, and we, I have a new member class that begins today. We're receiving 12 new members today. Scott and Linda, Shears, mm -hmm. a, a great spelling. Scott and Linda, you're going to learn everything you need to do that we require of you as you become a member. And that is, first we welcome you to be members of Messiah Lutheran Church, to join with us in worshiping God, number one, hearing His Word and sharing His Supper, two, proclaiming the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, Three, serving all people and striving for justice and peace in all the earth. If you are able to do that, answer by saying, yes, by the help of God. Yes, yes by the help of God. And Messiah Lutheran Church, you people, I ask, will you welcome them, pray for them, consider them partners with you in serving Serving God and serving others. If so, answer, yes, by the help of God. Yes. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for Linda and Scott. By your life-giving power, bind us to each other in you. Strengthen us for service. Support us all our days. And bring us at length to that day when all your children will be one and you will be all in all. Amen. Scott, welcome. Thank you. Linda, welcome. <laughs> I expected this, too.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Made alive with God in Christ, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy One, you have called your church to be your humble community of service, having been baptized with the baptism of Jesus. Guide your people into such faithfulness that we may serve the world in your name, and that your justice and peace may be accomplished. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Preserve the whole creation so that animals, plants, and land flourish. Protect endangered species and new pollu polluted waterways. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing. Ease the many burdens resulting from illness and mend the brokenness caused by sin. Be with those who suffer and make your people whole, especially Katie Brady, Linda Brashear, Karen Cleave, Kate Coulter, Jeff Dykeman, Shannon Eagleston Leff, April Hollinger, Larry Hopper, Jennifer Stillwell Jackson, Cindy Jones, Dustin Jones. Frank Kimsey, Jim Lampy, Ellen Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Lynn Peterson, Lori Pettit, John Reynolds, Amy Robb, Florence Stillwell, Kylie Timmerberg, Ann Wilbur, and Logan Young. Are there any others? We remember those in faith, led by your spirit, who are even an inspiration to us now. We remember especially the life and ministry of Pastor Maynard Hansen. Bless his memory among us. Comfort all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Inspire the work and words of artists, authors, preachers, and teachers in the church. Use their gifts to proclaim your goodness to those who long to hear. Lord, in your mercy. Gather these concerns and all who are in need into your abundant care, O God, remembering your promise of mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Mark. Let us pray. Merciful, Merciful God, God, as great kings of peace scattered yep. on the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. your heart let us give him thanks to the Lord how her God It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You dined with Sarah and Abraham, promising them new life. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you welcome us to your table and satisfy our deepest hunger and thirst. By your gifts of word and holy meal, strengthen us to take up the cross as we go about our callings in this world, following after Jesus Christ, our servant Lord. Amen. I'm going to suggest you read your messenger. Uh, th this week is the Bishop's Convocation, a theological retreat. So Thursday, the Thursday morning class on uh, faith and current events will not take place, but pub theology in the evening will. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take. The love of God that gives us courage and strength and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God.